Hello everybody, on the Creek Island of Lesbos, a refugee camp caught fire, or more accurately, um, there had been some arson attacks on the, on the uh, site, um, probably committed by the residents. Uh, there have been a number of witnesses, both from uh, NGOs, so left-wingers, as well as the government, which is currently like center-rightish. Um, and the residents around uh, the camp, uh, meaning the locals, the local population, they all have seen the fire to break out in various places at the same time. And they also report that uh, it looked like they are inhabitants that have laid the fire. Also, nobody died, even though the camp held uh, 12,000 residents at the time. That's the size of a huge city, and you can imagine if a huge city that size burns down completely and people are caught in usually people die. Uh, in this case, we are lucky that uh, people were warned uh, in advance and uh, they packed uh, apparently their stuff and uh, could legitimately flee uh, the dangerous place. The Asnas are believed to be uh, residents themselves. Um, uh, there have been some trouble because 35 um, people in Moria had been tested with a new coronavirus and then there were these precautions um, to stop a further outbreak of the disease and those uh, struggles over the restrictions and um, the different ethnicities and you know you have to communicate over language barriers and then there are conflicts. Um, uh, starting from those test cases and the restrictions um, for the epidemic control uh, may have uh, led to the discomfort that made some residents uh, lay the fire. An additional thousand residents lost their homes, their shelters last night because a second uh, attack uh, or arson attack uh, took place. Um, this very strongly outside of the uh, low casualty uh, rates past night um, was uh, is, is a strong, strong indicator that we are actually talking arson here. According to the New York Times, the place had been built originally for 3,000 uh, people. Uh, it grew in size to uh, 20,000, uh, but then of course it returned uh, to the 12,000. Um, it also says that uh, most uh, residents were from Afghanistan. Um, now, um, this camp was established in 2015, and uh, you wonder really what happened in Afghanistan in 2015. And the answer is nothing. Um, the, the answer is that uh, the left had manufactured a crisis uh, in 2015 that uh, isn't a crisis. There have always been conflicts and armed conflicts around the world uh, forevermore. There was absolutely nothing, nothing uh, special about 2015 outside of a decision by decision makers that they want to pretend we have a crisis that um, requires extraordinary measures. As you probably know, um, Afghanistan is a Central Asian country. It is uh, a long distance from Europe. People had to travel a long mile. Um, on the way, there, there are many places that are actually quiet, uh, where they could have settled down and built some something up. Also, Afghanistan itself is a huge place um, where there are there are quiet areas as well. Uh, this is also the case for, for much of Africa. Even Syria is not totally um, uh, in, in, in warlike turmoils. I mean, not every backyard is a battleground. You know what I mean? Uh, the, the battles take place in this or that village, but it's not that every place is uh, equally at risk. And this is crucial in understanding the crisis that is not uh, a crisis. Uh, the manufactured crises that we see in the past, be it uh, climate hysteria, uh, the mass migration, and so forth, they are all um, based on Yes, uh, a real, a, a real core, a real problematic core. Also, racism, for example, a real problematic core, and it's just expanded for purely political reason into into an emergency. Now, what is the difference between a problem and an emergency? A problem can be solved with um, substantial solutions. You you, you draft uh, your plans, you negotiate uh, different concepts, um, you come up with pros and cons, and eventually uh, different uh, interest groups and so forth haggle out a, a solution that fits best most people um, at a given time, given the information they have. This is a solution to a problem. Now there is the emergency. Emergency requires short-term solutions, the makeshift solutions. Um, this camp in itself, and this is um, what the numbers uh, show that uh, the New York Times uh, told us, that it was um, established for 3,000 um, uh, people. This was established as a makeshift solution.
And instead of accepting that uh, we are not talking an emergency, but rather a problem, uh, the makeshift situation had been uh, solidified. Um, we are now seeing a permanent camp on Lesbos and um, the traffic on the Mediterranean Sea has also steadily um, become stable. Um, and more and more people rather solidify the situation than to see it as a problem that requires a long-term solution. In my past videos, I've talked a bit about the Green Party movement and how this is underestimated. Um, particularly in America, people don't know how much of the ideology of the elites is not so much um, just um, popping out of universities, but is uh, a cult that emanated around the environmentalist movement um, and very specifically in, in a group, in a socioeconomic snobbish, very snobbish environment. Um, that uh, has a variety of belief sets. And in Europe, um, the advantage and disadvantage um, at the same time is that they have already advanced to a degree that you can hear them more often speak. So you understand their mindset and their propaganda and what propaganda tools they, they use. And as I said, the difference between an emergency and the problem is the quality of the solution. If you actually plan a long-term solution or just a makeshift solution and try to solidify the makeshift. And the Koreans are very, very good in uh, claiming that they are for the future, for something that's permanent, durable. They use all these words all the time uh, to give the, the impression that they are working on a solution. Uh, while in reality, if you look at it, their solutions is always replaced uh, plastic with something that's just as ecologically questionable as plastic. Uh, replace um, f uh, fossil uh, cars with battery cars. That's now a big thing here in Germany um, that uh, fossil uh, fuel cars are replaced with batteries that are of course toxic, uh, that are easily inflammable, have a, a million downsides are produced in uh, in China, in the very province that is uh, suppressing the Uyghur uh, uh, minority in, in uh, penalty camps and is sterilizing women, etc., etc. So um, they are replacing one thing with another thing and they just present their makeshift solution as the, the sheer superior uh, uh, long-term solution. Uh, for the problem and their specialty really had been over the past to exploit every problem, be it some uh, remaining risk of uh, nuclear energy, be it um, some trash that you find lying around and so forth and come up with all these makeshift solutions and also then they want to statify the makeshift solution. And so they usually come up with one solution over the next solution and um, replacing the, the second solution and so forth. I do remember that um, we used to buy uh, milk in bottles and the solution or the problem was that um, they are heavy. Right, um, bottles are heavy, and uh, the the fuel that's uh, uh, to be used to carry them from one place to the to the supermarket, for example, and the solution is of course a paper package, which is much lighter than glass. Um, that also turns out to be challenged again by the same groups. Um, now it's it's littering the oceans, obviously, and uh, I suppose we are turning to uh, plastic bottles, or we may return even to the glass bottles again. Whatever it may be, um, it's always one solution, one makeshift solution, um, militantly advocated, uh, being replaced by the next makeshift solution, also militantly advocated for by the same groups. And the solution at the time were uh, paper packages, which were militantly advocated for uh, because they were lighter than the glass. Um, now, of course, the same people say that uh, they end up in the oceans or on the wayside or God knows where. And so those have to be replaced with, I don't know, maybe plastic bottles, maybe they will return it with glass bottles. But whatever it will be, it will be just as militantly advocated for as the previous uh, makeshift solution. And likewise, Moria um, had been a steady fight uh, makeshift solution and at the same time they are they were uh, moaning about its weaknesses because it is makeshift. Um, you can see from the New York Times uh, article for example that they talk about an impoverished uh, camp uh, which um, is dishonest to begin with. There are a lot of words in English that suggest uh, poverty. Impoverished means um, that had been a great place before <laughs> and for some reason they have uh, lost uh, their wealth. 
or their prosperity. It is a makeshift camp for Christ's sake. Again. You know, there are millions of words uh, to describe the condition of that camp. But they choose impoverished because it suggests that uh, these people have lost something. And uh, that again suggests to leftist ears that somebody is guilty of something. So the blame is, uh, is put on Europe. And indeed, there are a lot of activists that actually suggest that uh, this camp is a, um, a shame of the European uh, people, uh, that it's our fault and it's not the fault of our elites that have actually invited all these people from Afghanistan, Africa and so forth, the majority being from Afghanistan. There's even one person that uh, had been engaged in the human trafficking of the, of the uh, migrants and she uh, wrote on Twitter that uh, while she can sip on a coffee, uh, these people have to live in these squalid conditions. And for her and for a lot of people on the left, this is a sign for an egregious inequality. And to some degree, I actually agree with her. And I want to talk a bit about um, the difference between solution and makeshift solution um, uh, again. I do actually agree that somebody like Carola Rakete lives a good life, while people who have uh, decent intentions, who are hardworking or want to work hard, um, live in these terrible camps. I agree that this is not fair, but fairness is really a standard for human beings and not for um, the world as such. Uh, the world is not fair. Some people are born sick, some people are not. There is no such thing as fairness in life. Um, we can expect fairness from other beings that you are treated equally well from other people. You can expect fairness from other people. But I also I don't uh, find it fair that somebody like uh, Carola Rakete that I despise uh, has a good life and some of these people from Afghanistan have a bad life and I don't know who is who, some maybe very decent people. And as the New York Times notes, they are not all refugees, they refer to them as refugees and migrants who have risked everything to flee war and economic hardship for a better life. So these people are not just fleeing um, war, they are not fleeing the battle in their backyard, they are fleeing hardship. And I have a lot of sympathy for that because I'm not looking down or from a safe haven um, to people who had who had it rough. I'm actually just looking into the future because I am looking into a situation where I could land in a similar camp in 30 years maybe or maybe even earlier given the economic decline that we see right now. More and more uh, companies um, go to the uh, chancellor's office to request subsidies uh, in this uh, crisis. We have the retailers, we have the, the car manufacturers, the uh, suppliers of the car manufacturers, and the restaurants. Um, one industry after the next actually cries for subsidies. And for the short term, um, this is something I would even encourage. That's even. Uh, from an economic uh, point of view, a sensible thing to do because um, you need uh, you need uh, an, an extra supply of money in a time when uh, the money in itself contracts because people keep it together, they are fearful. Uh, sometimes that is a reasonable thing to do. But I also fear that a lot of these companies actually don't have a substantial plan for the future and that we only have companies right now that seek uh, the assistance of the government that take out money and nobody pays in or fewer and fewer people pay into the uh, common shared uh, state and more and more people take things out and fewer and fewer put stuff in. And the shrinking economic basis um, takes a lot of pride in making the whole thing run, but that can be mistaken. I actually believe this is not a matter of justice anymore, but of steam. Sooner or later, all of these people that now are terribly proud of still having a good job and a career and so forth, uh, sooner or later they will run out of steam. Um, the, the health will decline, uh, the companies will crumble. Sooner or later, if things, if the mindset of the people don't, does not change and everybody just craps from the pot in the middle, then sooner or later uh, this whole thing will come crashing down. So as I said, I'm not talking down from a, from a place of privilege to people who had it bad in life. I'm just looking into the future. And I also know that um, we are heading into the same future. You can also look into the history of the places where these people come from. You look into um, Afghanistan in the 70s. You can look into Africa, uh, Cairo 
in in the 70s uh, 60s 70s and just look at the skirts the mini skirts the women were wearing and tell me that these people had made all the right choices i'm not saying that everybody in these camps is guilty of these conditions but a substantial number of these people have supported the systems that led to the situation um, there is a substantial share in the guilt or by many of these people there are true freedom fighters and so and so on and i don't even ask of anybody to be a hero or something but i do understand that if everybody would just give up a little bit of their personal advantage uh, during a time that turns ever more tyrannical as these people have experienced in africa and asia um, if more people had just given up a little bit luxury to combat the encroach of their uh, to combat the encroachment of their personal rights and their freedoms uh, the entire situation the entire societies would be better off they all had a stake in it and this is basically what riles me up i'm really proud of the people of hong kong i'm really proud of the people in, in belarus who stand up right now I also do understand that a lot of people in Syria have stood up and fought the tyranny uh, and the censorship and everything uh, around uh, the regime. And uh, that's a great thing. And I'm really proud of these people. The problem, however, is that few people had to make big sacrifices because many people uh, were too coward to, to make small sacrifices. After all, every system relies on the people that operates it. Um, and uh, you cannot go around and uh, speak about racism and how the Nazis uh, have uh, killed all, all these uh, Jews and Roma and the Polish and the Russians and so forth for racist uh, um, ideas. Um, if you don't stand up for what you believe in and the censorship because you cannot sort out the true ideas versus the bad ideas if you allow something like censorship to happen and tyranny to happen so you have to secure the open debate first and then you can go into the nitty-gritty of sorting out what ideas are good and what ideas are bad you cannot at the same time blame europe for colonialism for the nazis and so forth and at the same time exonerate entire populations as if they had absolutely nothing to do with the regimes meanwhile i'm in Lasche, the prime minister of the german state of north Rhine westphalia has declared that he uh, wants to take in more refugees into uh, the country uh, that is opposed by our interior minister horst seehofer who wants to rather redistribute the uh, refugees across europe um, that is the bad cop in our propaganda uh, usually and uh, you see that's the controlled opposition so um, the best option uh, we are presented is that um, the refugees just come in from Africa and the Middle East and it's just uh, the, the flow continues um, and they're just distributed a little bit differently uh, that's the best uh, solution we are offered in the public and then there's a bad uh, solution that is uh, everybody is uh, taken uh, into the country uh, in Germany we are not talking about sending these people to Africa and Asia and to uh, enforce our borders and to solve the the, the tyranny problem instead of uh, giving them ever more money um, etc etc we are not talking about the actual long-term solutions we are just talking about uh, redistributing them that is the best option uh, so to say and the the the, the uh, bad option is to um, to even channel them actively into our place um, those are the the good cop and the, the bad cop um, um, suggestions in the public it seems to me that our elites are perfectly aware of the lack, lack of substance of that solution quote unquote uh, they are actually just steadifying a non-solution a makeshift solution instead of trying to negotiate publicly uh, a stable one a long-term um, path forward so um, we we are talking about people that pretend they believe that distributing um, makes a difference in the entirety and in the amount of people. Um, you probably have heard of that uh, Christian story of Jesus distributing fish. Um, for Christians, that is a sign that um, Jesus was divine. His distribution of fish changed the amount of fish. Right? That's a sign that he is um, he, he is a divinity. Um, that's the Christian view of it, right? The left believes they are themselves the divinity. If they distribute your wealth, 
then suddenly it becomes small. If they distribute uh, refugees into different places, they somehow m miraculously become less. This think they are Jesus Christ, who can change the amount of anything by distributing it around. And as I've said, I, I don't think they actually believe that. They believe um, um, that uh, they just could statify a makeshift solution until the next person will pick up the bill. Um, they don't care if uh, the future generations have a miserable life, um, which will come because we will have ethnic conflicts in our country, we will, we will have um, the economic calamities uh, fall out from um, a variety of reasons, the, the coronavirus, but also the willful destruction of our economy through hyper-environmentalism and a lot of um, uh, social nonsense um, uh, claptrap, a lot of uh, bad decisions. Um, so in, in the long run, they know that uh, this whole thing is collapsing, that uh, we have maybe 15 years at most, where we live in fair uh, um, prosperity. But uh, in reality, the industrial basis is shrinking. We have a shrinking industrial basis or service basis, economic basis, um, and the competition for the jobs becomes ever harsher. I do not believe that people from outside who do lack the language skills, who do lack the professional skills or knowledge, some have university degrees, but they have not practiced thereafter because their job situation was already destroyed very often by socialists. Um, and uh, so we, we, ha we are having a, a very aggressive, um, shrinking economic substance and um, people with, a good, with good intentions thought they could make it in Europe. And I feel compassion. I feel compassion for these people who wanted to contribute to Europe, who want to have a good life in Europe and be part of it. I do respect them, but I do not think they have a viable way to do that. So uh, this is just a pragmatic view that I want a long-term solution. I want these countries to have a better economy to begin with and, mm. and that starts with birth control it starts with courage uh, to speak up against corruption against uh, your leaders the substantial solution is that africa and asia have to do their homework that was it for today and i'll see you soon bye